what's made in Emeryville. Go to ExpressionCollege.com to see what our students and instructors are dreaming up right now. Vampire Weekend, Live 105 Expression Session. Thanks again for everyone for uh, coming out. Hey, uh, Ezra, would you introduce your bandmates? Sure. On the drums is Chris, Christopher Thompson. On, on the bass is Chris Bea. On the keyboards is Rustin Batmanglij. I'm Ezra Koenig. And let's note that uh, Chris is drumming in Woody's office. So that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty rock and roll right there. How many times have you guys been to San Francisco? You guys came out in July. You also sold out the Independent in December. Then you're playing tonight. Is this the third time in San Francisco? Yeah, this is the third time we've come. The band has come here. And the record just came out. It dropped on Tuesday. Yeah. Self-titled release. And then tomorrow you guys are doing an in-store at 6 p.m., correct? At Amoeba Records on Hay Street. Yeah. And then if anyone going to the pop scene show tonight, I'd suggest you go get in line after this because there's going to be a line like five blocks long tonight. Tickets at the door, and it's raining out as well. So we're excited to have you guys here. How, it's just been like kind of, it's been crazy, the, the rise of Vampire Weekend over the last, really about the last year. Uh, how long have you guys been a band for? When did you guys form? Uh, we, we formed in, uh, I think, February 10th, uh, 2006. Oh, February 6th, 2006. What would you attribute, besides being good, what would you attribute to like, the success so far of this record, the critical acclaim, the press, the radio airplay, just music heads are, have been really embracing this, this record. What, have you guys thought about it yet? Like, why? What, what's going on here? Well, maybe part of it is that making the record is one of the first things that we did. It wasn't a situation where we were just touring and, and playing and then came time to make a record. We were doing those things at the same time, so we had something to like play for people. You know, it wasn't just a, a, a song here or there, it was a full album. Do you worry a bit sometimes that the world of the blog can accelerate a, a band's hype to a level where there's maybe not, not substance there to even really kind of dwell on that? Or do you guys just worry about making music and, and touring and, and performing for fans and developing a fan base and don't give it? what Pitchfork says, even though they did give you a good review, by the way, so, which was nice. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's totally possible. I think they could put unfair pressure on bands. But again, we were, we were lucky enough that we made an album. That, that's what people were getting excited about, the people who were, was that they heard a, a whole bunch of songs. They heard 10 songs. I think if you made one song and then people were talking about it and then you had to make an album, that'd be a lot of pressure. No, I completely agree. Tell us a little bit about the current track, the current single, A-Punk. What is what is that song about? Where did that uh, where, where was influence for that? I guess I guess it just came. We, we were just. I guess Bea was playing drums. I think we were in the barn at Chris Thompson's parents' house. We were just came up with this riff and then at we, a barn. Yeah, well, it's like oh, a, a lot of like barns a, in New York. That's right, my man, in New York City. No, no, no. Barn. The barn, the barn is in rural New Jersey. Oh, okay, on some farmland, and so we just kind of came up with this riff and then. Uh, a little while later, when we were back in the city during practice, we started working on it together. And that, more than any, any other song, really came together as a band. Like, everybody, it just kind of came together in about 10 minutes, all of us just working together to, to make a full song. Did you guys all attend Columbia University? Is that where you met? Or were you guys friends before that? Uh, no, well, we, yeah, we met at Columbia and then became friends. And then only at the end of school did we start the band. Oh. All right, I'm done with my stupid questions. Let's go to the listener questions. I'm sure they're much better than mine. Elmer from San Francisco asked, how did you get your name? I'm sure you guys get asked that a lot. And what do you guys have against werewolves and weekdays? All right, I guess my questions were better, my bad. <laughs> well, the name comes from a film that I started making, a very serious artistic film about vampires called Vampire Weekend, which was inspired by the movie The Lost Boys, which took place ah, in Santa Cruz. In Santa Cruz, right on. Although they couldn't call it Santa Cruz. Last time I was here, I made a pilgrimage to Santa Cruz. Oh, did you? I was yeah. going to ask that. Yeah, I love it there. Oh, we go to the boardwalk and see where it all happens. Yeah. Brian from Castor Valley, what are your biggest influences? I guess it's a band question, not just for, not just for you, Ezra. What are some of your, your influences? What are, I guess, what are some of the bands that uh, inspired you to form Vampire Weekend? It's a really broad question, so have fun with it. I think one band was actually a band that Ezra and Ezra actually went on tour as a member of, and I played once in that we were friends with for many years, and they were called the Dirty Projectors, and they only recently kind of have people have become aware of them. But <clears throat> our friend Dave Longstreth, who writes uh, the music in the Dirty Projectors, has been doing it for a long time, and 
he's kind of inspired us with just his his ambition, which is just to make the most sort of accessible and the most next level music at the same time. So I definitely recommend anyone check out the Dirty Projectors. A couple more questions here. Mike from Napa, a lot of listeners here from the 707. Mike asked, what so far in your, in your young career has been your favorite gig? Now keep in mind you're, at, you're asking this before your show tonight at Pop Scene, which will right. be your favorite gig. So besides tonight's Pop Scene show, what, what else is your favorite gig that you would like to talk about? Oh yeah, when, when you opened for the Shins in Paris, that was a really great gig, because we we uh we usually just like to play our own shows. I mean, we when we get invited by a band, we like to open for them. Obviously, that's great, but we generally prefer to play a smaller show of our own than to open for uh, a lot of other people just for the sake of it. But that show, actually, I felt like we really had a connection with the audience, and even though very few of them had heard of us, because obviously they're there to see the Shins, it really we really felt like something happened, and that. Um, I don't know that we got we got something across there. You know, the Shins did one of these as well, right here, right where you guys are standing. The Shins did a, a expression, expression session for us once. What? Um, how did you guys hook up? Now, when I first booked you guys back in July, I think we booked directly with you guys. But now it was on MySpace. Yeah, it was on MySpace. Yeah. Now you, you're on XL Records. It's a great independent label. How did you, how did the XL deal come to fruition? Did someone come and see you guys playing a gig? Did did you guys send your demo to the label? Well, yeah, on our website, for a long time, we had a kind of a secret link to download the 10 songs we'd recorded. So if, if anyone was interested, we'd just send them a link to download it. And Excel was one of the interested people. And we were probably the most excited <laughs> when they contacted us because we'd even talked about Excel before having recorded any songs. No, it's a great label. I mean, it's from Cat Power to Sigur Rós, there's so many bands, you know, uh, Interpol used to be. It's hard to keep track because XL. There's a lot of different subsidiary labels. My right, my old roommate Jeremy, he always gets mad. I'll put a band on my playlist and I'll say Beggars. No, it's not. It's XL. I'm like, dude, I can't keep track of it all. It's Matador. But the whole collective group is a very artistic driven label that has a great history of artists. And I feel there's a really good fit with Vampire Weekend and XL. On the management tip too, you guys have a great manager and, and Ian and, and Matt Pollock. So you guys are. The same management firm that manages the Shins and White Stripes, uh, Rock and Tours, MIA. What? To, how? How did Ian and, and Matt come to find you guys? Like with, with our booking agent, he was the first person that contacted us, and we didn't meet any other booking agents. We we had a dinner with him, and then we said, "Yeah, we can. We should go with this guy." And that was really early in our career, um, before we'd actually been on tour yet or anything. And with management, it was completely the opposite. We met a lot of managers, but. Ian was the one that we liked the best. One more question here. I'll leave the best question for last. I believe is it. I can't even read his writing. Someone from Castor Valley. Would any of you, any members of Vampire Weekend have sex with Paris Hilton? I leave the most intelligent question for last. And also, is there any member of Vampire Weekend that has a crush on Mandy Moore? There is. There is a member of Vampire Weekend who has a crush on Mandy Moore. I'm not going to name that one. names. I'm sorry. And then with Paris Hilton. I think she has a crush on all of us because she was the guest on Letterman. And as, oh, we, she? as we passed her in the hallway, well, apparently she watched us on the TV screen in her green room. And as, as she was leaving, she said, good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there you go. Vampire Weekend performing tonight at Pop Scene, tomorrow, 6 p.m. in-store Amoeba. Yes. I want to thank uh, our production posse here, Brian and Lester in the command center over here. Uh, Matt Pollock, management firm coming up. Thanks, Matt. Uh, I want to thank Jeremy as well as Chris Chen from the label. Thanks, guys. Expression College uh, for sponsoring this Expression Session and our promotions team for helping provide the tasty pizza. Uh, I've been your host, Aaron Axelson. Vampire Weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.